All right, the last one is a real doozy. It's got lots of information. It's going to bring back some of our kinematics, dynamics, and combine it with this momentum. Key that we always have to remember is that momentum's conserved in every question. So the total momentum you have before is going to equal to the total momentum after. So we've got a ballistics device in this example. Is used to measure the speeds of fast moving objects like bullets. It consists of a wooden block with a mass of 6.50 kilograms on a horizontal surface. A bullet with a mass of 25 grams is fired horizontally from a gun with a mass of 2.45 kilograms. When the bullet strikes the block, it becomes embedded in the block and causes the block to slide across the table for 1.75 seconds before stopping. If the frictionful force between the block and table is constant and the block slid for 82.3 centimeters before stopping, determine the speed of the bullet just before it hits the block. So we got a lot of information that we have to sort through and then somewhere in this question we're going to need conservation of momentum. Notice they're giving you a lot of distance, time, initial velocity, final velocity. It's another indicator that we're going to need a lot of our kinematics formulas but we need to sort out what we have, figure out what we're looking for and then go find the appropriate formula. So let's look for all the information about the bullet. Object 1, the bullet has a mass in here of 25 grams. We do not care about the mass of the gun in this case. We're worried about the bullet and the block. The gun's mass is just there to try to throw us off. We have the block in kilograms, the bullet in grams. We either have to convert everything to kilograms or everything to grams. I'm going to go everything to kilograms. So the mass is going to be 0 0.025 kilograms for object 1. The velocity of that bullet before is what we're looking for. We want to know how fast it was traveling before it hit the block. There's our unknown in this case. What do we know about the block? Well, we know the mass of the block is 6.50 kilograms. So 6.50 kilograms. The velocity of the block is at rest, 0 meters per second. What do we know about the after? Well, we know the mass of object 1 and 2 will be equal to the total mass of the two objects. It's embedded. So the mass becomes 6.525 kilograms. The velocity of this object after is something we also don't know. Just after the block hits, we don't know what its speed is, but it does travel. So that's another unknown. So we have a problem here. I have two unknowns in this case, which means I need to have some other information to lead me to figuring out one of these unknowns. This is where all the kinematic stuff comes in. We know that it becomes embedded. It slides for a time, so it comes to a final speed of zero meters per second in a time of 1.75 seconds and it tells us it slides a distance of 82.3. Now because we're not using momentum formulas we will have to go to the proper standard units. So 8, 2, 3 meters. What we want to find out in this question is we want to know how fast it was initially moving together. Once we know that, we can go back to the conservation of momentum and find out how fast the bullet was moving. Because there's two unknowns, the velocity of the bullet and the velocity of the combined mass after contact, 
we can't just go and do a quick conservation of momentum. We have some other issues. Now when you look at your formula sheet, what I need is I need to know that initial velocity of the combined mass given the final velocity, given the time, and given the distance. Well if you go looking under your kinematics formulas, I don't really need acceleration or force in here. When I look at my list, I've got a formula that'll have d equal to vf plus vi over 2 times t. And we can manipulate this to find that initial velocity. And that's what I'm going to do on the next slide. So this is the organization part. This is what's going to lead you to what formulas you're going to use. Can't use conservation of momentum yet. We need that initial velocity of the combined mass. Let's go get it. So I'm just going to write these constants off to the side again. The initial velocity of that combined mass was unknown. We know the final velocity was 0 meters per second. We know that we had a distance of, I can't remember, 0 0.823 meters. And we had a time, which I should have read the same time I flipped back there, 1.75 seconds. So there's our information. Let's go find using this formula distance equals VF plus VI divided by 2 times T. Nice thing is, is VF is 0 so this formula simplifies to being just VI over 2 times T. So if you want to manipulate this for the initial velocity, the initial velocity then becomes 2 times the distance divided by the time. Multiply out the fraction, divide by t. Put your numbers in, the initial velocity, 2 times 0 0.823 meters divided by 1.75 seconds should give us an initial velocity, when I punch this in, 2 times 0.823 divided by 1.75 gives us an initial velocity and we'll carry as many sig digs as we can. I'm going to write down 3. 0 0.941 meters per second. I'm going to keep that actual value on my calculator. I'll use the exact value in the calculation. But now I know what that initial velocity is of the combined mass after. Now I can use conservation of momentum. Total momentum before equals total momentum after. We have the mass of the bullet times the velocity of the bullet plus the mass of the block times the velocity of the block equals the combined mass times the velocity of the combined mass after. The nice thing is the block had a velocity of zero so this can be simplified to being just one term on each side. Like example two. What we want is we want in this case what the velocity of the initial bullet was. So when you solve this for V1 it's going to be the combined mass the velocity of the combined mass after divided by the mass of the bullet. And when you put your numbers in, that combined mass was 
6.525 kilograms. The combined velocity right after collision was 0 0.941 meters per second. And we're going to divide it by the mass of the bullet, which was 0 0.025 kilograms. Punch that in. We should get a fairly significant velocity times 6.525, enter, divided by 0 0.025. You get 245. meters per second. And if I go back to the original question, better check my significant digits. Everything has three significant digits in here, so I'm okay to leave this as 245 meters per second, which is a pretty fast moving bullet, but it should be a high number to cause that kind of movement. So the last two examples were kind of done a little bit differently than example one. Rather than working out the individual momentums, I used the formula, manipulate it. Again, the things I recommend most for this, especially when I get to the harder types in next lesson, please ensure that you get up some sort of notation that will identify the appropriate masses and velocities before and after. It's that organization that makes these problems easier to work with. If you can't stay organized with your numbers, you'll be all over the place. The actual calculations are quite simple, actually. It's just a matter of keeping all that information sorted out. So whatever notation you use, stick with it for all types of questions, and that'll help you in the long run. What you're going to work on is in the workbook, there are a series of questions on linear momentum. I'm just kind of flipping to them right now. Have a quick read through the actual lesson and do practice exercises on page 21 to 25 numbers 1 through 12.